welcome to my sick leg prison. Today we're going to talk about one very busy British guy, Mr. Shabaka Hutchings. British jazz is really taking over. Of course, the current wave of British jazz is not the first one. Back then, in the older times, uh, they had the, well, there I say it, some white jazz. Musicians who performed the European school of jazz or indulged in the third stream, which was a mixture of jazz and classical music. Uh, so now what we're getting is something completely different and it comes from different sources. Uh, the base for the current movement of British jazz is, um, is a mixture of cultures that Great Britain has endured. Well, thanks to their colonial past, let's be honest. First off, we have spiritual jazz that obviously comes from America, but it also comes from Africa. And implementing some dub elements generally into the project. Well, it, it started obviously with the post-punk movement since the end of the 70s, uh, beginning of the 80s. There were some British post-punk, like punk jazz bands uh, that had very uh, specific British sound. Well, thanks to the immigrants from Jamaica and Caribbean islands. Well, it's not really an episode of about the punk jazz from the 80s, but it sort of is, because Sons of Kemet are embracing the sound on their album, and their album uh, Your Queen's Reptile was a pretty big thing uh, in 2018. So in at least a few tracks they make their inspirations pretty clear. Uh, another uh, another uh, project has been on is Melt Yourself Down, uh, I heard their album in 2013. It's like pure Afrobeat post-punk, literally. If you, if you heard that band and you're sort of interested in this type of music, you may uh, try... Uh, you may want to try uh, the cooperation of, of The X, so this is a Dutch art-punk band, with Etio Jazz, with Mr. Mercuria. Mm, this, is, this is the album you're looking for. And finally, Shavaka Hutchings, who is a saxophone player, also did a traditional spiritual jazz album as Shavaka and the Ancestors. Uh, featuring several musicians from South Africa. And this is a pure and true spiritual jazz album that takes from the best traditions. Well, South African spiritual jazz generally does have traditions. So this was my favorite album that he put his mark on. You can tell me in the comment section which of uh, Shabaka Hatching's projects is your favorite. But today we're going to talk about The Comet is Coming. And this got quite some hype in Poland. Uh, first because of uh, because Sons of Kemet broke through last year, so now everyone heard, hears about it. So I mean, even people who don't really listen to jazz, I, I saw them giving high rates to this album. Uh, perhaps because they generally don't have big uh, exposure to jazz. Well, me as a person who has been listening to jazz, to different types of jazz a lot, I have to be a bit more critical. And I'll start from saying that I liked their first album more. It has more of electro, space rock uh, type of vibe. It has more uh, consistent quality. So if you have to pick just one, I suggest you take this uh, this first one. But okay, today we're going to talk about the 2019 album Trust in the Life Force of the Deep Mystery. I'm sure they picked the, such a title so I couldn't memorize it. Uh, basically, it has two really strong tracks and two decent ones. And together it has nine tracks. Okay, so the, uh, the, the beginning, like the first few seconds of the first track, okay, it, it got me interested. Uh, it set some pace, some rhythm. Uh, some mood. Unfortunately, it turns out that the first two tracks are more like background jazz tracks. You all know this type of jazz, I guess, if you've been listening to, to jazz a bit. Okay, let's say it sets the mood, but it's completely uneventful. Party starts with Summon the Fire, and like literally, party starts because it's such a banger. What I like here is the raw sound of the saxophone and very good hook. Shabaka does hear what he really likes doing in all of his projects, playing one tone repeatedly. But here with this song it has success, because I can totally imagine them playing this on concerts and everybody dancing. It's even like, is, is there such a thing as stadium jazz? I mean, this song is stadium jazz. It could make a wide audience dance. It even reminds me of the famous uh, The Champs tequila song in its climate. So also, if you want to pick just one song, uh, to listen is definitely the song. It actually is uh, connected with the next song. 
uh, Blood of the Past with the guest singer Kate Tempest, which actually has pretty good lyrics. This is a protest song of modern times. Uh, shower, smoothie, coffee, commute, check the internet, never stop, never stop. Mm, yeah. I mean, this is a pretty long song and uh, I suggest you just read it on your own, it reads like a poem. And then, unfortunately, after you're already like set up for something big, uh, then like two completely uneventful tracks are happening. Uh, Super Zodiac and Asso Flying, there's completely nothing about them. I mean, if, you, if you're trying to listen to the background, you'll just see the same thing over and over, and I mean, the sound is not even that convincing. But something more interesting happens with the Time Wave Zero. This is where you start having some breaks, breaks in uh, percussion, um, some uneven synths. And then the saxophone uh, starts playing first slowly, and then it takes it over. It does have some claustrophobic lounge vibe. Pretty cool song. Unity has a pretty interesting uh, theme and I think they, they made uh, some sort of video for this song. Uh, but it doesn't really... but it goes all over the same for over 4 minutes, so I think it's a little bit boring after some time. But I think Unity could be a reference to Albert Eiler uh, albums. And finally, uh, the universe wakes up. This is... Uh, well, I mean, the, the title is optimistic. <laughs> Uh, this is a more traditional spiritual jazz song and it does have some Albert Eiler in it. Of course not the most free jazz crazy type of uh, playing, but uh, the general style. I mean, not all of the Eiler style is so crazy and raw. It starts off slowly with just some synths playing in the background and then at some point drumming really t kicks off and it's really embracing the spiritual free jazz vibe. I think all of his uh, projects, all of his albums, has some strong moments and some not that interesting moments. Uh, there is nothing different here. Mm, the rate I would give, I mean, it's absolutely listenable. Uh, but I mean, from a jazz album, I'm a bit more critical than usual. I think a 6.75, let's say, would be my grade. Mm. Actually, in the next video, I'll do some minimal sense review. And for the next week I'll leave uh, Tyler the Creator because I mean everybody has been reviewing Tyler the Creator, so I want to prepare something, uh, something more about him to to stand out. <laughs> and also there will be a new Flying Lotus, so I'll also listen to that. So I will see you next time. Take good care and bye.